Good morning, Excellencies, UN Correspondents, ladies and gentlemen. The Security Council has just made to hear a briefing on the status of negotiation between Sudan and South Sudan. On the 22nd July, the Republic of South Sudan submitted to Sudan and the African Union High Level Implementation Panel a peace agreement containing concrete proposals to resolve compre comprehensively all of the outstanding issues between the two states prior to the 2nd August 2012, deadline mandated by UN Security Council Resolution 2046. The overall purpose of the proposed agreement on friendly relations and cooperation is the achievement of permanent peace, prosperity, and security for both nations. We believe that the agreement is fair and balanced and takes into account the interest of both states. On security, the agreement calls on the parties to cease hostilities and implement all previous security agreements. In particular, they will establish the safe demilitarized border zone on the basis of the African Union High Implementation Panel's November 2011 map. The use of the African Union Panel's map to establish the safe demilitarized border zone is entirely without prejudice to final border claims. South Sudan has already accepted this map for the purpose of establishing the security mechanism. The agreement also would have the parties activating the joint border verification monitoring mechanism and an ad hoc committee to deal with an allegations that these agreed security provisions are not being respected. In addition, the parties will set up a joint demarcation committee to demarcate the common boundary uh, where there is a grid. Consistent with the provisions of agreement initiated on the 13th March 2011, 12, I mean. This will also immediately demilitarize all areas that are disputed, claimed, or unresolved. For any such areas, the parties will attempt to resolve their claims by negotiation. If they fail to agree by the 2nd of August, then the border issues shall be referred to binding international arbitration. Furthermore, the parties will establish 10 safe corridors and border crossing points to permit the resumption of cross-border trade and movement of goods and people. On economic issues, South Sudan offers to resume oil exports through Sudan in order to support the economies of both states, as long as fair deal can be reached on transit terms. South Sudan is offering total fees amounting to $9.10 per barrel for GNPOC pipeline and $7.26 per barrel for the Petrodar pipeline. The resumption of production on these terms is conditional upon Sudan guaranteeing that no South Sudanese oil will be confiscated or diverted for any reason. A monitoring team, which will include representatives of international community, will monitor oil movements and there will be an independent audit system for the movement of oil from processing facility to port. South Sudan is also offering 3.028 billion US dollars to meet one third of Sudan's fiscal gap, subject to resumption of oil exports through Sudan. In addition, the parties will work together to mobilize financial assistance from the international community to meet another one third of Sudan's fiscal gap, as well as Sudan's own development needs. Remove economic sanction on Sudan and advocate relief of its debt. Taken together with the transit fees and profit to Sudan from processing facilities, under the agreement, there will be a net cash transfer from South Sudan to Sudan of 3.245 mil billion US dollars between now and 2015. In addition, 
South Sudan will forgive arrears estimated at 4.968 billion US dollars, both from unpaid oil revenues and debt forgiveness. This would bring the total wealth transfer to 2015 to a total of 8.213 billion US dollars. On citizenship, the agreement states that each country has the right to adopt its own nationality and citizenship laws, but will do, is, will do so in accordance with the human rights of its peoples, so that no one is denied a nationality or citizenship, and the laws applied do not discriminate against anyone. In addition, each state will ensure that the other's national enjoy the four freedoms for residents, movement, economic activity, and property ownership. On ABA, under the agreement, the African Union and the United Nations will hold a referendum in ABA before the end of November 2012. This will be organized by an ABA referendum commission to be shared by a person who is neither from the Sudan nor from South Sudan. Those entitled to vote will be the Ngok Dinka and other residents of ABA area who have had continuous residence for not less than three years prior to January 20, 2005. In the area as defined by the 2009 Permanent Court of Arbitration Tribunal Award, should the parties fail to agree the terms of this referendum, the African Union and the United Nations will draft a referendum agreement to govern the, the referendum. All traditional rights of Messiria and other migratory populations will continue to be respected by South Sudan, provided that they move across the border without arms. We believe it is possible to reach a deal on this basis. South Sudan is, however, concerned by the relatively slow progress of the talks, which are still focused primarily on security issues. We strongly encourage Sudan to join us in accepting the African Union High Implementation Panel's November 2011 map for the purpose of establishing the agreed border security mechanisms. South Sudan does not support an open-ended process with the requisite political will, a deal is possible prior to, two, to the 2nd August deadline imposed by the United Nations Security Council uh, Resolution 2046. South Sudan intends to remain fully engaged in the negotiation process, and we call on Sudan to do the same. Thank you. I would uh, be pleased to take a few questions. Yes, please. I mean, it seems like Sudan has, it's, you know, it's a very detailed offer that you guys have made, but they've, Mr. Abd Abdullati has said, uh, now isn't the time to discuss oil, even if they offered $40 a barrel in transfer fees. They, they seem to really be taking this position that, that w among other things, alleged support of SPLM North, and they also claim that JAM is entering the territory and receiving some support, even medical support, which might be entirely legal. I mean, do you, Realistically, do you think it's going to be reached by August 2nd? And if it's not, what's the next step for, for South Sudan? This agreement uh, proposal is comprehensive and I think is giving uh, a solution to all the outstanding issues. We expect uh, the government of Sudan to look at it seriously and to respond uh, positively. Okay. See, I mean, and what do you, what do you make of the, this most recent allegation of theirs, that the JAM rebels from Darfur or Southern Kordofan, it's unclear, they claim not just cross the border, I think that they're saying that if, you, if they get medical care on the South Sudan side of the border, this is somehow support. Is, is it, do they get medical care, and does, if so, would that represent support or just humanitarian uh, aid? Uh, these are uh, unfounded accusations against our government. Uh, as we said before, I repeat it once again, that we are not harboring any uh, rebel movements from the Sudan. These are internal issues concerning the Sudan, and we are not at all providing any kind of support, whether it is materially or politically, to any of the rebel 
in the government of in the Republic of Sudan. And how about the aerial bombing? The UN seems to have confirmed that this bombing did take place two, two kilometers uh, south of the 1156 border. I see you you didn't bring it up. Is that are you just being classy or, or did it not injure anyone? What what's the story on that bombing? We have been continuously bombarded by the Sudan in different areas of our northern states and uh, we have always uh, condemning those attacks and we have submitted a complaint to the United Security Council uh, about the recent one and of course it has been uh, proven by the verification mission of the UN that in fact uh, six bombs were dropped in, 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 the, in the localities of Rumakir in northern Bahar Ghazal state. Thank you.